So what exactly is a spherical wave? Well, a spherical wave is essentially a wave that begins at a single source point and it propagates outward in all possible directions and the medium through which our wave propagates is assumed to be isotropic. Now isotropic simply means the medium is exactly the same in all possible directions. So once again, when a wave propagates from a source in all directions, the wave is known as a three-dimensional wave. And if the medium through which that wave travels is isotropic, that means the wave is known as a spherical wave. Now, what's one example of a spherical wave? Well, a sound wave is a spherical wave. So that means if I take my fingers and I snap my fingers, the snap creates a sound wave and that sound wave is a spherical mechanical wave. So that basically means that we're assuming that the medium, which is the air, is isotropic. And that's a pretty accurate assumption. So what exactly is taking place when I snap my fingers? So when I snap my fingers, and let's say I snap my fingers in this red position given by this red dot, a sound wave is created. Energy is transferred in the form of a sound wave. And so the sound wave propagates outward in all possible directions. And at any given moment, the shape that our sound wave creates is a sphere. So as the wave moves outward, the energy that the wave carries is spread out over a larger and larger area. Now recall what the definition of intensity of a wave is. Intensity of the wave is equal to the average power power which is simply the rate of change of energy divided by divided by the area of our shape now the area of this shape of a sound wave is simply the surface area of our sphere which is given by the following formula 4 pi multiplied by radius squared. So let's replace s with the following formula and notice what this tells us. So when I snap my fingers, a sound wave is created and the energy that the sound wave carries remains constant. Since the energy that, is, that it carries remains constant, that means that the average power is also constant because average power is simply the rate of change of energy. Now, at the same time, what happens to my denominator? Well, my denominator increases as my wave propagates outward. In other words, the surface area of my sphere increases as the radius increases. And that means because my average power remains constant and my denominator increases, my intensity of the sound wave decreases as my sound wave propagates outward from the single source of origin. Now, what exactly is the relationship between our radius and intensity? Well, the relationship is given by this formula. We see that as the radius increases, our intensity decreases. Now, let's suppose I want to compare my two intensities at two different points. So, suppose that we examine two different points. One point has a radius of r1 and the second point has a radius of r2. And the radius r1 and r2 both begin at the source at this red region. So, what exactly is the intensity at point 1? Well, intensity at point 1 given by I1 is equal to our constant, the average power, divided by the area, 4 pi R1 squared. And likewise, the intensity of my sound wave at point 2 is given by the following equation, labeled as B. So, this equation is A, this equation is B. Now, Let's suppose I want to find the ratio of intensity at point 2 
2.1. So that means I want to take I2 and divide it by I1. Now I2 is simply this equation and I1 is this equation. So I take this and divide it by this equation. Notice my P's are constants, they will cancel, and my four pi's are constant, they will cancel. And I'm left with the ratio of I1 to I2 is equal to the ratio of R1 squared to R2 squared. So if I take my squared out, I get the following result. The ratio of my intensities of point 0.1 to point 0.2 is equal to the square of R1 to R2. So that basically means that if my radius increases by a factor of 2, when we go from R1 to R2, my intensity decreases by a factor of 4. So for example, if R2 is equal to 2 times R1, then the intensity decreases by a factor of 4 because R1 divided by 2R1, where 2R1 is simply our R2, we square this, the R1's cancel, we have 1 half to the second power, which we get 1 divided by 4, and this is equal to I2 divided by I1. So this basically means that when we double the radius, the intensity at that second point is decreased by a factor of 4, and that is our relationship between the radius and our intensity of a spherical sound wave. Now, what about the amplitude? What is the relationship between amplitude and the radius of a spherical wave? Well, once again, let's consider two points. The first point has a radius of R1, and the second point has a radius of R2. So, recall what the equation for our average power is. Average power is equal to this entire term. Now, because we are assuming our medium through which our spherical mechanical wave propagates is isotropic, that basically implies that the density is constant and our velocity of the wave is also constant. That means the frequency is also constant. Now, because our average power is assumed to be constant, the average power at point 1 is equal to the average power at point 2. So I get this quantity is equal to this quantity. Now, now notice the pi's cancel, these cancels, the density cancels, the velocities and frequencies cancel, and we're left with the following equation. Now this pi has to be squared as well. So we have these cancel, we have these cancel, the velocities and the frequencies cancel, and we're left with so there should be a velocity term here. The velocity gets cancelled and we're left with S1 multiplied by A1 squared is equal to A2 multiplied by S2, where the A2 should be squared. So I get the following result. So S1 times A1 squared is equal to S2 multiplied by A2 squared. Now, notice that S1, well, it's simply 4 pi times R1 squared, and S2 is simply 4 pi times R2 squared. So once again, our 4 pi's will cancel, and we're left with R1 squared times A1 squared is equal to R2 squared times A2 squared. So we get the following equation when we bring all the radii to the left side and all the amplitudes to our right side. So we have radius at point 2 squared divided by radius at point 1 squared is equal to our amplitude at point 1 squared divided by our amplitude at point 2 squared. So because squares appear on both top and bottom and on both left and right, we can cancel those out and we get the following result. So these cancel because we're essentially taking the square root of both sides and we get that the ratio of the radius at point 2 to the radius at point 1 is equal to the amplitude at point 1 to the amplitude at point 2. So that means our amplitude is essentially inversely proportional to our radius. So as our radius increases, our amplitude decreases.